All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here at the Bureau of Experimental Speech and Holy Theses. Um, we're going to continue with our Diction for Dollars event, um, uh, which will continue until just a little bit before 11. Um, a few, uh, few things to note before we get started is that there are more BESHT events coming up. The space itself is available almost every day of the week from 12 to 5. It's, the museum is closed on Mondays, but all other days this space is open and available. Um, the mic is on, the camera is broadcasting and recording. And so if you have any desire to come and speak, or if you are part of a group of people, an affinity group, or activist group, or student group, or whatever, that would like to come and speak, um, or to use the space, you can either just show up and hope that the space is not being used already, or you can um, contact us, and we can um, help you reserve the space. Um, if that's of interest, you come find me, and I'll give you one of my cards. And, you, and there's an email on there, and you can come, and uh, we can make some reservations. Um, now, next week, the space will be, I don't know the schedule of the museum next week, but I assume it's open for some of the days. But there's no official BESHT event going on next week. Um, our next official BESHT event will be Thursday, um, uh, November 29th. And that will be, um, we'll still have the Diction for Dollars beforehand, but at 8 PM, we're going to have um, a bunch of wonderful experimental writers here who are going to be leading some, gui some experimental guided meditations. Um, uh, those folks, that'll be uh, Johnny Jungle Guts, um, Matthew Timmons, and the group called Unfo. So um, they'll be here on the 29th. Then after that, the following week, on December 6th, we're going to have a, a closing reception, which will feature a performance by a, a colleague of mine, um, Doug Barrett, who was unable to, he was originally going to reperform a piece by uh, a performance of Julius Eastman's um, from 1975. He was originally going to perform this piece on the opening night, and it got, and he, but he got stranded on the East Coast because of Hurricane Sandy. So we're going to reschedule that, and he's going to come on December 6th to, to do that. Um, the performance that he'll be re-performing is a lecture that Julius Eastman performed within a John Cage piece that made John Cage really, really, really fucking angry. Um, and uh, so he's going to do a rendition of that. Um, but also in that final event, uh, anybody who has participated here at the Bureau of Experimental Speech and Holy Theses will be able to come and receive their Toastmasters of Fine Arts, a TMFA. Um, it's an honorary certificate, which will hopefully get, take you a long way in life and open many, many doors, hopefully. So, um, so make sure you're, uh, if you've participated, hopefully you'll be able to be here for that. Um, there will also be diction for dollars uh, before that as well. So, but let's go ahead and get back to the dollars and to the diction. Um, is Susie here? Yeah. Oh yes. So a couple a couple things um, during diction for dollars, uh, uh, you have up to twenty minutes. If you're about to get to the limit, um, we have a yellow alligator that indicates that you have one minute left. And as soon as you get to the twentieth minute, you get the red alligator, which means that you have to stop. Um, that doesn't mean that you have to speak for twenty minutes. You could speak for one second or. 10 seconds or 10 minutes, it's, it's, there's no requirement for the duration. And also, you don't even have to make sense. If you're afraid that, oh, I didn't bring something tonight or I don't have anything to say, don't worry. Uh, there are plenty of books here that you can read us private emails or you know, love letters or angry, you know, whatever. You can, okay? So every, anything is possible, almost anything. So. Um, also, in the way that we calculate our minutes is uh, if you speak for like five and a half minutes, then you will earn five dollars. We round, we round down here at Besht. So make sure you speak at least twenty minutes if you want to uh, earn twenty dollars. 
So next up is Susie, who's going to be presenting some poems. Will you give Susie a big round of applause? in here. Okay. Um, so I have some poems that I'm going to read off of my phone, and I also have some that I'm just going to recite. Um, so to start off, this is a poem called um, Bones. So I think I have the bones of nothing sacred and the ego of nothing human. I have not found a way to decompose the odds and boil off the hatred. My soft soliloquies are always looming in the distance, monologues until I can find something worth my interest and my time. Yours spent writing soft, sweet lullabies. I need reprise missing what had mattered most in life. Because see, I was created not out of some test tube. I was not fated to live by gods nor some professor's rules. Yeah, I've got flaws, a dozen, but that is what I choose because I burst in on reality with balance sewn into my shoes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, this is a poem called Senses. Okay. Blind me and hurt me, do all but desert me, because without you I'm what? Blind, deaf, dumb, with no sense of smell, with no taste on my tongue. Gouge out my eyes, I'll still see through the storm. Cut off my ears, I'll still hear your sweet song. Take my feet and I will still come to you. Without arms, oh, I will still hold. I'd run to you if I had not the time, for I love you despite all of your crimes. Okay. And this is another poem I've written called Mosquito's Sonnet. Okay. Um, you flick your fingers hitting sucking bugs that come to bite you, but I can't see that truly their intentions were to spite you. For they are envy in a shallow way. They have some substance that once defined the body that survived so you could exist. They have a piece of you, the blood that let your heart stay beating. The heart in me, for you, I swear that it could not be fleeting. For if you needed it, I'd give you all my blood's transfusion in hope the love in me could bring in you mirrored illusion that the new warmth in you could flow as love from chest to spine and send the heat I gave unto your heart straight back to breathe in mine. Um, let's see. And have another poem, um, if I can find it. Okay. Um, this dichotomy inside of me is tearing me apart because my brain allows efficient, but there's beauty in my heart. Hacking away the weeds of an overgrown high road, my arms tired and heavy, from the heart that I sewed to one sleeve in hopes that I could grow a little compromise. This art is great, but I should find some meaning here before I die, do something big so I can wear philanthropist in this lifetime or something noble so I can scrape the wells that lay deep in my eyes. Um, and yeah, okay, that's all I'm gonna read, so thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much, Susie. Um, next up, to be broadcast online and recorded for posterity, uh, is um, uh, Liesl. 
Is Liesl here? Yes, and she's going to be uh, reading things I have written on my phone. Welcome up, Liesl, please. Um, so I got this phone at the beginning of the summer, and since then I have written things that seemed important at the time, and I'm going to read most of them from the beginning, and I don't know how long it'll take, but they're pretty short. This will do. This cafe is a hot spot for heart-to-hearts of women having midlife crises. Ugh, I don't want your hubby troubles interfering with my grilled cheese. Every single person on this Starbucks patio has his slash her, fo- her nose in a phone. Today at work, I was reprimanded for being shy and not urgent and got in trouble both for asking for help and not asking for help. But a couple I was serving told me the service was great. Got to work on being direct and remembering table numbers in the sense of emergency. Oh, and when there are people, I'm giving them initials. Want to make a mind map of C. Who is he and do I know him or... Oh, I just... Okay, I got a notification thing. Who is he, and do I or don't I know him? And will I ever tire of him? And is this person I'm thinking of a mythical creature of my own invention? And if so, who's the person in the skin? From where comes the fear of everything? What if this every night headache can be cured by smiling? Mantra of the moment, we're always fooling ourselves. Sometimes I feel like walking around with a giant banner above my head that says introvert, and I realize I already do. Regardless of social acceptability, I've come to the conclusion that there's no inherent difference between familial, platonic, and romantic relationships, just a different cocktail for each person. Maybe the key to being happy is not hiding from unhappiness. Misheard on Bart, this is your memory train. There are many things I'm wise enough to know, but not wise enough to believe. Mm, sorry. C presently is starting his life as a philosopher. He's smaller than my memory, slim, stylish, halfway a stranger. But I feel it, I still feel it, want to meet him all over again, and know him all over again, and can't tell what he's thinking or feeling at all. He's a master at that. I hope Jay didn't scare him away with his well-meaning forced presentness. I have to remember that he blogs about video games. B said, he's definitely an angel, but he hasn't grown up yet. Memory is the most valuable thing of all. Goodbyes are rough. I have so much love. Meditative collaging night. Oh, by the way, I'm in college. I've never been sick, but God, have I been afraid. Tell me, why does the world smell so terrible today? Fuck, I feel weird. I feel high. Did someone put something in my chow mein? Am I losing my mind? I probably just burrowed in a little too far. Brain chemicals. G is my soul twin, one of them. G's friends suddenly seem like cardboard, and he feels like the only one who's real, and he feels very, very alone. Hey, thanks to this random person that I don't really know on Facebook who said, good things never last, but it's the continuation and recurrence of good things that make life wonderful. Um, Queer Burlesque Club brought S to mind. Dear G is seriously contemplating a major in watersheds or something. Iced coffee at 10 p.m. I think I'm giving myself heart palpitations. Jesus Christ. I believe I may have an admirer in German class. Not really the one I wanted. Names of people I meet here. Sarah, Emily, Catherine, Lauren, Megan, Becca. I said I miss you, Cheerio, and you didn't respond. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. On a different note, Anon finds me intimidatingly smart. I can't say I mind, no, but I've never been intimidatingly smart before. Being a child is terrifying, was. Why is there no glamour in my loneliness? My spirit animal is the bookish man. Because I'm picky and insecure. I may want to revive C, my leonine friend. 
Overly vivid details can make it surreal without being unreal. Sorry. The only career that sounds truly wonderful is used bookstore owner, damn it. Good vibes at first sight. I guess I am kind of a serious person. If I wasn't self-conscious about solitude, it would be more fun, but less fun when it became more difficult to escape. A woman who has one child with every man she loves to remember him by. Completely stumped about the tiny, minuscule condoms in the bowl upstairs. I hope nobody ever calls me or anyone I love free-spirited. I made a friend tonight, but now I feel really nervous. And now that I'm anticipating reading stuff from this, I think I'm saying different things. Age differences matter a lot less in college. So far, kind of a bummer of a day. When sober in the presence of drunk people, I either become even more sober or get drunk on their drunkenness a theoretical supposement. If I cut my hair and make it redder, I can be Thomas Jerome Newton for Halloween. I wonder why it is that humanity seems to evolve toward greater gentleness. Everything I know about contemporary feminism I learned from the internet. M could fix everything by sending me the right letter. She'll end up calling me sometime and she'll say she loves me and I will forgive her anyway and she won't have a clue that anything happened at all. Election jitters. I don't know if I should distance myself from her or continue being alarmed by her. Poetic prose is so much nicer than poetry. I love eavesdropping. I was feeling bad because P never writes about me until I realized that I don't need to write about him either. We need each other, but we don't need to sort each other out in words. Maybe I can be a book publisher, publisher slash editor. That might be something I'd like to do with my life. These essays make me want to scroll horrible across the top. That thought makes me want to scroll horrible across my face. Why is there this hateful community of people on YouTube who are de determined to disprove the existence of mental illness? Why are my friends so bad at staying in touch? The urge to restart the song in the middle of the best part just to keep it from ending. Flirting would be much more fun if it didn't feel so much like losing control on a ski slope, or maybe less fun. In writing, it's purity of expression that matters. Sometimes that calls for grammar, and sometimes it doesn't. And that's the last thing I wrote. so much. Um, up next, we have Juliet, who will be presenting Untitled. Everybody welcome Juliet to the podium. Hi, uh, my name is Juliet. And um, I'm sorry if this doesn't make sense or if I just kind of ramble on, but I'm going to tell a story right now. But first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Juliet. I was born in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm 21 years old, but sometimes I feel like I'm a six-year-old still. Um, 
my spirit animal is a honey bear. And right now, I'm really worried that I'm going to make a fool of myself. Um, so that's that. So I think I'm going to tell a story about um, this little boy that I met this year. He's six years old. Um, last year, I started working at an elementary school in Claremont. I go to school here. Um, and it's Sycamore, right on 6th Street. Not on 6th Street, 8th Street. And um, I love this job because whenever I go in there, uh, I open the door and I get there at 9 a.m. even though school starts at like 8.15 for them. And so I'm really interrupting their day. They're in the middle of something, but I open the door and everyone turns and they all are so happy to see me. All of these six and seven year olds, like this is amazing that this college student comes in and like helps them with drawings and helps them write things. So it's a wonderful part of my day, even though I'm not really that special or important, and I don't really do anything that great. Um, but I love it. And so I've met some pretty awesome kids there as I've been working there these past, or last year and this year. And there's this new class this year that has this little boy in the class, and he's actually one of the kids that doesn't get excited when I come. Not that he doesn't like me, he's just like so in his own world that he doesn't care that someone else walked into the room or is trying to like help him with his math problem. Um, and his name is Joshua. And he's probably one of the loudest kids I've ever heard. And he has this really, really high-pitched voice. Um, so it's kind of sad, but often like the teacher that I work in the room with gets really irritated, irritated with him. And um, sometimes I feel bad for him because I feel like he can't just help it, or he can't help it that he's so loud and annoying sometimes. Um, so my first interaction with him was one of the first days I went there. There's a little girl in the classroom um, named Olea who is from Norway and she can't speak English yet. And so I was trying to help her like figure out what she was doing when we were like doing this little writing assignment, which she can't really do because she can't write in English. And all of a sudden I feel this thing in my ear and I turn and Joshua is poking me with his pencil in my ear to get my attention. That's the kind of kid he is. And so I was like, Joshua, you can't, you can't do that. Like, you're not supposed to poke people with pencils to get their attention. You can tap me on my shoulder. And so he like turned around. He's like, oh, fine, okay. Well, I just have a question. And I was like, all right, Joshua. So that was my first meeting with him. And then as I kept going back to the class every day, I learned more about him and his personality. Um, there's this one thing they do every week where they put each of the kids' names up on the board and then they try to make as many words as they can from the letters in the name and exercise in trying to figure out spelling and new vocabulary and things like that. And so it was his turn one day when I was in there. And he kept saying all these words that weren't real words. So he would say like, so, S-O-H. And the teacher was like, um, no, that's not a word, Joshua. Sorry. And then he'd be like, OK. And he'd come up with another word that like, didn't make any sense. And so every time he got turned down, because he kept coming up with these words that just weren't real words. And that was just how he was. So another day, I went in there. And we were all sitting in a circle. And the teacher said, all right, guys, we're going to come up with some juicy words. And that's what she calls adjectives, so juicy descriptor words to make things interesting in the stories that they're writing. And so they start going around, and one little girl says, happy, and another little girl says, sweet, and a boy says, blue, and then Joshua, it gets to be his turn, and he says, histamantic. And I look at the teacher, and she looks at me, and we're both trying to like figure out if this is actually a word. Because it kind of sounds like it's a legitimate word, but it, it's not. And so the teacher was like, you know, Joshua, I don't think that's a real word. And he got really upset. And so I guess I'm telling this story because as I was sitting here listening to Anna speak and some of the other people and just being in this space, I think a lot of the time we're told that like what we're thinking is wrong and what we're trying to create is not good. And 
we shouldn't be telling kids that. Like, yes, maybe he shouldn't be making up his own language, but like, he's such a creative kid. He comes up with these words and he's saying all these things and he's just doing his own thing. And yeah, I found him pretty inspiring when I thought about it that way. So I guess that's my story. Thanks for listening to me. <laughs> Um, up next, oh, we've got um, the very special guest from Los Angeles, um, Guan Rong. Can everybody welcome up Guan Rong? And her, the title of hers is called I Lost My Phone. So how many people is after me? Can I ask you? Um, right now it's 9.56. I have to try to be here as, as long as I can, 20 minutes. So this we have to leave here by 11? Yeah, so we got, if, we got plenty of time. Really? Plenty so of time. I don't, I, but I also wish some people, other people can get some money too. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hiya. Uh, I, I, okay, I'm going to talk about I lost my phone yesterday. I, th um, I was, I think yesterday was a pretty bad day. <laughs> when I first wake up, it was okay. And then I drive to, I was, I'm going away. So I'm trying to find some present for this person. I'm gonna stay at her house. So I always buy this soap. Like whenever I go away, I try to buy people this soap. Normally I go to their store in Venice, but it's too far. So yesterday I decided to drive to Pasadena to go to Whole Foods to get this soap. And, <laughs> um, so I was feeling pretty happy and then driving and then at this intersection on Green and uh, I think it's some, stupid street. So I, I tried to get the I tried to turn left and then this lady, she is driving toward me, she's trying to turn right, right? I'm trying to turn left. So eventually we're gonna drive on the same street. So she is driving super slow. I don't think she knows how to drive. So she is driving super slow. It's green light, there's no other car. She is the only person trying to make a right turn and just go <laughs> there, no other car around, but she is waiting for me to turn left. <laughs> and then, so I did, and then she honk at me. <laughs> That's so stupid. And then she hung, and then, oh man, my whole day met, got messed up. So I got really pissed, I honk back at her, be super, super long time. And then she, I think she got scared. So she couldn't, she, she got scared, she, she's kind of taking her time, driving up, like kind of following me. <laughs> so, and then I think, and then we both stop at the stop, like a red, like <laughs> red light, and then she's like behind me. And then I think for some reason she honked me again. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get more mad, so I like, beep, 
<laughs> just oh man, I never honk at people. So one time I almost hit this jogger because I don't know how to honk at people. Like he was on his um, earphone and he's just not looking. <laughs> and then, I don't know, I thought he saw me. So he was jogging, tried to cross the street. <laughs> I tried to go around him, <laughs> but I, uh, anyway, so I almost hit him just because I don't know how to honk at people. And then my friend was sitting next to me by that time and he got super pissed at me. But anyway, uh, so I just don't like people. I, I, I don't like people. So, <laughs> so yeah, so like, yeah, I don't like people. Here, if you're a stranger, like this group might get trouble, like, and that kind of group, like, um, Jake, right? So, yeah, splitting from Jake, Anna, like, uh, there are maybe okay. Beside that two girls standing by the door, because I don't know them, so I don't like strangers. Anyway, so if you <laughs> if you get in my path right now, I might we, we, you might get in trouble, and I might get in bigger trouble than you. So, <laughs> but anyway, so she she pissed me off, and then I get to uh, Whole Food, and then they were selling oranges in front of Whole Food, and then I look around, I was like, oh, what do you do? You see orange, and I was kind of like talking to myself, mumbling, oh, what do you do? You do this. So I open the orange and I start eating. <laughs> so I finish the orange. Well, I was eating, because oh, when people piss me off, I just want to do whatever I, I want to do. I, <laughs> so I, I started eat the orange. Uh, I walk into the, because, yeah, in that sense, I some sort of, I'm trying to look for trouble, you know, to just get my energy out. So, <laughs> well, luckily, I didn't get into any trouble by eating that orange. So I got in eating my orange. I finished the orange. And mm, I got the soap, and then I went upstairs it's in Pasadena. There's two-story Whole Foods, so I went upstairs trying to eat some food. <laughs> Last, how I figure out how do you eat free food in, at Whole Foods. Normally, I would just go there just trying to pick out food with my hand, like, <laughs> like you know, like from the tray. But last time I was at Whole Food, I found out there is testing cup you can use to taste your food. So this time I'm a little smarter. I use the testing cup just to be a little nicer to other people. So maybe I have germs on my mouth. <laughs> and um, so I start to eat my food using the testing little container. So I was eating, 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 eating eat a lot of food and then I become full. So it's ready to check out. Oh, and I was painting at the kindergarten I work at, that we were painting um, floors, but <laughs> yeah, you don't have to listen to me if you don't want to. Uh, we were painting floors for their, floor, uh, for, their, for their playground. So I got one, two, three, four, five big bug <laughs> bites. Oh, that was very bad. Um, the day before yesterday, it was super small when I first got the bug bite. Maybe mosquito, but it's like one, two, three, four, five, and on my arms. But yesterday, when I wake up in the morning, they're huge, super, super big, like super big on my arm. Now you can see it's getting better because I got something natural from Whole Food. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I. Well, yeah, so I'm thinking maybe right now, I s maybe I will start buying more natural things. I just, and then yesterday when I go back home, I told my mom don't buy dishwashers. I can buy natural dishwashers for the house. S but anyway, so at Whole Food I check out, I went, I left Whole Food. Nothing happened, I didn't really get in trouble. I think maybe that's a good thing by eating food from the, yeah, just eat food. Uh, so that's, I think that's had something re like, it's related to why my phone is lost, um, because I did something really bad. Um, 
Well, I think I always thinking about stealing. I really like to, I, I always thinking about stealing, but I never actually dare to steal anything because I think I'm just, I don't know, I'm, I need more practice on stealing if I actually, <laughs> you know, if I actually do it, you have to practice. But I never practiced before. Well, there was one time I remember when I was in China, my best friend, she is really pretty. I, I always hang out with pretty people. Like I, I am always like the ugliest among the people I hang out, hang out. So my best friend, she's really pretty and she's really nice and she's, um, one time we are just like, like hang, hang, walking on the street. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, for all that time, only six minutes. I have a lot of story to tell. I hate talking normally. If Kei Chang give me money, I would, oh man, I'd be a so much better DJ. Um, so, well, we were hang out, hanging out, like uh, trying to shop, like shopping on the street. You know, China has a lot of street vendor or whatever. So we were, I remember that so clear, um, we're in high school. I was like, oh man, that's so pretty. Like we saw pretty kitchen, super cute. And I was like, oh, that's really cute. But I was just saying that, that kitchen is really cute. And then after we left, and then she, she asked me like, oh, do you like that kitchen? I was like, yeah, that was pretty cute. And then she gave it to me, she stole it. Oh my gosh. That's just so brave. I can't believe like how she how she stole that. Um, yeah, so I think that's. I feel stealing are pretty bad, but I think always thinking about stealing are maybe just as bad as stealing. So I better do it other than just thinking about it. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, so I always think about stealing. Never actually did. Like eating food is maybe is kind of like a stealing, and. I also teach at this community center. <laughs> and also whenever I want to steal, it's like, oh, I'm just, oh man, always like, I'm like, people always caught me. So <laughs> I also teach at this community center. They have um, big rolls of toilet, like paper towels. I always, and also I always thinking about stealing tiny stupid things, like things that w doesn't worth any money, like, paper towels, but huge roll from the machine. So last, last week on Friday, I was there, I said, oh, maybe I can take that towel. Cause it, and then I tried to open that machine with K-Chunk, because <laughs> K-Chunk keys are tiny. So I did, I opened it. So I opened it while I'm in class teaching uh -huh. the kids. <laughs> so nobody, the kids, they don't know. So they don't know. <laughs> they were like, oh, maybe Miss Rachel is trying to guess, trying to do something. So I took that whole roll of toilet paper out to put out by the sink um, and then prepared to take it home with me after class. <laughs> then, <laughs> so after class, um, uh, so they always have to, this worker who work at the community center, they before the class, they they pull out the tables from the storage, and then after the class, they have to put back the table. So while I was thinking about, oh, I'm gonna leave, taking the toilet paper, the guy came in trying to put the table back. So, and then I think he saw, the room is super empty, and he, he saw the roll of paper laying by the sink. And I think he was thinking, why is that <laughs> paper laying there? <laughs> it's impossible. But anyway, I didn't get to take that roll of paper. I don't think I'm gonna do it next week, just, just to make sure um, he don't think it's me. So maybe I would still try. To. And also when I went to toilet here just earlier, I saw there's some paper. <laughs> Maybe I'll just take it today. <laughs> Unless if you hide it. Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> maybe I, no, if I'm telling you, there's no point to take it. Um, so, uh, oh man, 20 minutes go by so fast. Uh, and 
why my phone is lost because I always thinking about stealing things and yesterday I I was looking for trouble and trouble comes um, another thing I feel really bad about is okay so I teach at the, this kindergarten and I also teach private um, just on my own and I try to save a lot of money you know like being like really cheap save money but we are going to do a art show for the kids for before Christmas so I promise the kids to give them present but I don't want to buy the present out of my own pocket but it's my own teaching private teaching I should buy the present for the kids out of my own pocket so I have my own teaching room at the kindergarten I teach at they are three rooms so three art rooms but I am in charge of all three so but I don't use the other two I only use one of the room the other two are belongs to other teachers so actually Johnny Jungle God is teaching in another room right now they are a whole like how many box like about 10 huge boxes of toy been sitting inside Johnny Jungle Cat's room for at least four years, four or five years. I've been teaching there for seven years. So I think my boss left there and forget about it. So he doesn't really go into the art room, only the, you know, nobody. Yeah, so he bought, I think the kindergarten, they give toys away before Christmas every year. So I think he just eventually like put some like the box of the toys in the art room for storage and then he forgot about it because it's been like a really long time so and then i thought huh if he forget about it i can take the toy <laughs> to give it to my own students which <laughs> has nothing to do with um the kindergarten teaching so <laughs> i've been trying to do that because they have um, I've been trying to steal the toy for like two times because they're huge boxes. I have to, I can't really carry them, you know, in the, in the time. So I, so they are like huge Barbie dolls and Hot Wheel cars, big. So I did stole them, f most of, <laughs> most of them. Um, I have to steal, um, still steal maybe two more boxes it's like but i i don't know it's in the art room and it's been there for four years so <laughs> what? Uh, uh, yeah so i did steal them so i think i can never do anything bad from my own thinking like if I think stealing is not very good, you know, I think maybe it is not very good. Not saying it is not good, but it's just not very good for me. <laughs> you know, you can steal however you want. I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> so, I, so I think like my action is called stealing, like, you know, like not telling the truth. So, yeah, and I have been using their, the kindergarten's photocopy <laughs> to copy my own stuff. So, uh, that's, yeah, so I don't know how much are the toys worth. I don't know how much to get a new phone. I have, I don't know how much to get a new SIM card thing. I think I have an old phone, but I don't think I'm gonna try to get an iPhone. Um, I have a really old phone, so I might use that. Maybe, I think it's about, maybe to get a new SIM card, it's about 100, 150, I don't know. So, which means I think the phone, see, I did, I steal something, I get, I get some free stuff, so I have to pay it back. So that's how I, th how I think the way, why my phone get lost. And it's all my fault, because yesterday I was, trying to buy some takeout at the restaurant. And I was thinking, oh, while I'm waiting for the, for the takeout, I might get boring so I can bring my phone with me. 
and then I lost it. I think I feel something. I think I put it on my pocket behind my, how do you say that, behind my butt? <laughs> my <bad. laughs> I, I should just, well, next time, I think that that's, a, but I don't wear bra, so I can't really, if I don't have a pocket on me, I can't put the, my phone in my bra or something. I, yeah, I don't know where, where on my, I don't, I don't have anywhere to put my phone, so. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, may, maybe, maybe, I think today I don't have a phone. My, yeah, so I think, well, I asked my boss to call me and my, my phone got turned off and I, I went back to the restaurant. They didn't find a phone. Uh, and I don't want to go get a new phone just now because I just don't want to deal with this kind of stuff. Uh, but maybe I will borrow my dad's phone and try to call some parents, tell them we don't have class for two weeks. And, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, it's almost one minute. One minute. That's, how do you, uno, dos, tres? <laughs> <laughs> huh. Well, yeah, oh, that's good. I, wow, from the beginning and to the end, I think I'm talking. Oh, and today, how much money I spent. Well, I bought Anna's, I bought Anna's book, $10, yeah. And what did I do this morning? Did I spend any money? Oh, man. Money, uno, dos, tres, cinco, cinco, six, <laughs> siete, 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 ocho, nueve, diez. Has someone have a key? We're gonna pause for one second.
Let's keep this going. Alrighty. Thanks again for being here. Just a reminder, everybody. Just a reminder, uh, we have a really fabulous publication, The Best Weekly, that's available for free out there. Um, there are also some uh, People's Micropony songbooks out there. Um, our uh, Best Weekly, uh, we're going to have five issues of it. The third issue just arrived today. It's got a bunch of text from Anna Mayer, uh, some scores by uh, John Bertel, Ilana Mann, and myself. This is John Bertel. Everybody give John Bertel a hand. He's got some great scores and some great prompts for the Radical Reiter in here. And uh, our very wonderful designer of this and the backdrops in the room and everything, my, my collaborator Tanya Rubach is here. Give her a hand, please. <laughs> Fabulous text, there's more. Um, but let's go ahead and get some more dollars out into circulation. Um, next up is John Bertel, who's going to be presenting, hmm. Um, I, uh, so I had two different thoughts. Um, one, I was, I was planning on reading uh, uh, this essay that Andrea Frazier wrote recently that um, uh, was her contribution to the last Whitney Biennial, but then um, I was thinking, then the books are here, so I was thinking about spending the money on the book. So then I thought maybe I would do a reading from the book, but um, I, so I thought I would put, let you decide and you could vote. So, um, so people that want me to read the first option, the Andrea Frazier essay on uh, art economics, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five in the back, six. Okay, uh, second, an second option, loose lips, uh, loosened lips. Uh, one, two, three, four. Five, six, wait, <laughs> that was a tie. <laughs> um, okay, I'll flip a coin, maybe. Um, just I'll flip, <laughs> flip you. Um, okay, so which one should heads be? Do you think heads should be the, 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 the first one? Heads is lips. Heads is lips, that's true. And then the, the tails can be uh, Miss Frazier, um, okay. Oh, it's tails. Oh. oh, and that was tails again when I dropped it. So um, I'll I'll stick with the plan. Um, this I'm I'm a really bad uh, public reader. I've been trying to work on it. Um, uh, I'm an even worse speller, but. Um, yeah, so I've been trying over the last year to find uh, opportunities where I can read in public. Um, a, B, C, D, E, F, okay. Um, so I thought this might be, I think it's this one. One of them's three pages and one's seven. So I think the three pages one is probably more. When did I start? How? How much time? Three minutes, okay. So at 10.20. Um, I think it might take a second to download. We'll see how far I get. <laughs> I might, uh, mm -hmm. Is there some kind of rule on how, like, uh, is there a limit on not talking? Like if somebody just stands here, does the, is there like, or like, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Um, I don't know why this isn't working. Well, um, but so you're saying there isn't, I don't have to talk. I could just stand here. You have the money, though. <laughs> man, man in front, do you have an answer? Or? What he does best is taking photos of Corey. <laughs> um, I don't know why it's not, not uh, it doesn't want to do it. Yeah. Let's say I think it's, 
Maybe we'll try this other one if this one doesn't work. Or would it just go straight into downloads or something? Hmm. Okay, yeah, I guess I'll just read from the book. I'll give it one more try. I was so excited to read this, so maybe huh Well, you can read it. You you know where it is. Um and you can just imagine me <laughs> reading it. Um so I didn't really pick out a part to read. I think I'm just gonna skip through um and read different parts and and if I'm reading one part and you want to hear more, you can say that. Or if you want me to go on to the next, you could say that too. Um, uh, it's my job, pleasure, to make a literal conceptual platform framework for which to speak what I must speak. I can tell you love from the way that you use words. Introduction, page 10, word the word, part one, metapsych. Page 14, Conversation with Emily Lacey, page 26, to Tumulsent, page 41, Word the Word, part 2, Succithus, page 46, uh, is Azalea Banks really bi or just trying to get attention, page 58, Word the Word, part 3, Unimplementing, page 68, Give us a specific example, page 87, Interview with a uh, yeah dude, page 96. Aggressive magic, page 115. Notes, drawings, and hand letters from Animare's archive. Attributions contained within. Uh, textbook, textbook, textbook. Two, two, two. Shit, bull, shit. Bullshit, bullshit, bull. You, 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 you. I, 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 I will, 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 will. Only ever be, only ever be, only ever be, only ever be, only ever be. Book, 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 book the end. Uh, you are loved so much you have no idea. Love, Marco. Interest. Uh, a literary love word, the word, part one, meta psych. About the site, the Experimental Meditation Center of Los Angeles. Uh, we don't need that. Uh, the first three events is intended to, the first of, the uh, See, this is why I need to practice. The first of three events intend to in initiate and affirm the connections between exploration and language, consciousness and articulation, and approximately, approximately one hour non-silent meditation of the following, limitless myths, infectious sound, and editorialized flow. Facilitator Anna Mayer will present examples of psychedelic pop and rock that reference in their lyrics. Yeah. Um, uh, what it could be like, what it could be like, what it could be. Do you hear the words, three minutes, magic carpet, 1972, psychedelic ride, 219, Ides, 1968, Mobius trip, 246, HP Lovecraft, my eyes are getting heavy, 516, Parish Hall, 1970, a flight, re flight recitation, 241, the Calico Wall, uh, Voices, Green and Purple, um, 137, that one was good. Um, page 63, what's that? Okay, um, but I was anxious to see if a small bit of knowledge made any difference in the way I understood the meat. The burgers are compact beasts nestled in hand-sized, gently toasted buns. The crust of well, 
The crust of the meat is crisp, sweet, well browned. The juicy, dripping patties are perhaps juicier, more loosely compacted than one might expect from the meat with the developed crust, but not so significantly so. The <laughs> interesting thing was that the meat dripped like a rare burger, but I had but had the pinky gray color of a burger cooked to medium. It was a good burger. That's a good part. <laughs> what was that from? Um, um, uh, okay. What do you think about mutual masturbation and masturbation between two men, non-sodomy? Would they be homosexuals? Yes, for me, homosexuality is linked to the idea of sodomy. That would be an embryonic form of homosexuality. Does Neville think that one could be the victim of succubus during passionate love? Uh, I think perversely, perversity can be produced. Ah, I think perversity can produce such effects. One can dream of possessing a woman one knows. What do you think about that? That has nothing whatsoever to do with succubi and is an entirely reasonable expression of desire. Um, yes, yes, you. Um, wanted writer to compose a 30 to 3,000 word female description of a female state of sexual arousal, but to include but not limited to orgas orgasm, all styles welcome, complicate. Compensation guaranteed. Contact Anna at an observe an observed pattern, not a norm, at gmail.com. Um, 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 okay, so this is Anna and Emily Lacey, um, summer two thousand two. I've always been interested in how in your music there are two ends of the a continuum. At one end is a very narrative-based folk music that tells a story, and at the other end there is a very experimental, looped music. It still uses words, but is much more well experience-based. I wanted to talk about how you, it feels to have these two ways of working, and when you do things that fall, uh, fall at other points on the continuum too. And then you do things that fall at other points on the continuum too. I'm really interested in that continuum. When I started doing each of these gestures, those gestures, the folk song versus the more ambient durational form, I was aware that they sounded really different and felt really different. It felt like they were part of the same language, just presented in a different way. From no electricity, total acoustic, just the single voice, all the way to the recorded signal looped and repeated with an improvised si signal. I really, I was really interested in the whole spectrum of communication. Um, it's hard to describe. I feel like I'm having a mystical experience. I know that that is a kind of fuzzy description. I'm suspicious of saying that since I'm having this kind of experience, then other people are too trying to expand consciousness in music and then the way. Um, um, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> okay. Thanks. Tanya Rubik, Adam Oberton, Corey Fogel, Jemima Wyman, Susan Mayer, Emily Lacey, Jonathan Lerquet, Ler uh, Seth Romatelli, Amy Andre, Jacob Dotson, Marco Shapek, Liz Glynn, Candice Lynn, Suze Sue Bell Yanks, John Bertle, James Mc 
Steve McDevitt, Carol Che, Jackson Flater, Charles Mayer, Elizabeth Mayer, David Welzius, Margaret Wertheim, Derek Weisenberg. Any other any other parts you want to read? <laughs> um, ecstasy often leads to ecstasy. And speaking of sexual pleasure, Breton, are, are you the only thinking of the physical aspect, or do you, or do you never think of the physical aspect, or is that? In the sexual act, mental pleasure you experience encompasses everything. Um, 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 um. How much longer? Uh, we have about five and a half minutes. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> but I can. <laughs> How many people want me to stop? <laughs> oh, that's not that's not too bad. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be more. Uh, Those are the people who are next in line. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, uh, okay. Um, a yeah, dude interview. I thought maybe you'd start with the questions the surrealist at, oh, we already kind of. Yeah, that's interesting to me that they would think they still can't say the word out loud, that it's something they have to say to somebody in private. You've got to say it either, you've got to say it to their privates. This is loving, lovely, con <laughs> loving, ah, this is lovely congulingus. I'm such a bad reader. This is lovely Cungilingus. Cung, cunning, <laughs> cunning, ah. Cun, okay, um, o okay, so. <laughs> you don't, you do what you do using only language. The informal and intimate dialogue between the two of you. You don't even use still images, except once at one your live shows. Is this conscious effort to counteract the barrage of content in your everyday lives or simply a log logistical necessity because you're doing a very low budget podcast. I think there is some philosophical choice to that, but it started because it seemed achievable, something we could accomplish. If we could get in a room and I could record an hour here, go home, compress it, turn it into an MP3 and put it on the internet. I thought that you can at least pull that off. You won't fuck that up. It is void of anything other than the voices. Talk radio is like that. Talk radio was a huge thing when I was younger. My mom listened to it so much in the car. That, so I heard a lot of it growing up. It doesn't happen much anymore, even though our lives aren't that much different. People still communicate. People still live in their cubicles. So I knew it would serve a purpose even without anything to watch. And it was something I could get out relatively easily without slowing the process down too much. Uh, because at the end of the day, time is. Making work that is one thing, but it produces a highly durable con consumer that can be sold easily with only traces of an intended meaning. Why would I want to do that? How to theorize language with, how to theorize with language without only telling. Thinking about Ed loud rumbling further in Surrey, fatter or more keys in the car because it's the way so it would be socially awkward. 
uh, humiliated by not having sex, writing for free, being exploited, period, moving, problems as early death, the love I am pro probably pr not probably It's as if all that allowed for this moment is somehow no longer. I am in a state, a state of becoming. Here, make some room for me. Give a specific example, two and four, Adam Overton. In late 1950, my mom was at the beginning of her teaching career, instructing high school English classes in Dearborn, MI. While grading, she found herself writing the phrase, give a specific example, over and over in the margins of her students' papers. She wrote it so often that eventually she had a custom stamp of the words made, after which she just inked and stamped away. My mother told me that one of the most common mistakes. All right, let's hear it for John. All right. Oh my gosh, it's uh, 1042, and so we're going to go until, uh, until 1050. So the next person has up to eight minutes. Um, we have uh, Will. Everybody give it up for Will. Twelve minutes. Uh, this is by Vladimir Nabokov in Memory Speaks. Speak Memory. I was crazy about goalkeeping. In Russia and the Latin countries, that gallant art had always been surrounded with a halo of singular glamour. Aloof, solitary, impassive, the crack goalie is followed in the streets by entranced small boys. He vies with the matador and the flying ace as an object of thrilled adulation. His sweater, his peaked cap, his knee guards, the gloves protruding from the hip pocket of his shorts set him apart from the rest of the team. He is the lone eagle, the man of mystery, the last defender. Photographers, reverently bending one knee, snap him in the act of making a spectacular dive across the goal mouth to deflect with his fingertips a low, lightning-like shot. And the stadium roars with approval as he remains lying for a moment or two 
full length where he fell, his goal still intact. Thank you. We've got five minutes left. Uh, uh, Corey Fogel is up next. Would you like to sure. do your thing in five minutes? Sure. Or us. Or us. Okay. Uh, so, as some of you who may know me in this room, uh, may have heard me say before, I have uh, a lot of trouble reading. I have a lot of trouble focusing and reading and comprehending and following through on things that I'm trying to uh, learn in written form. So I wanted to take this opportunity uh, in this space to uh, learn something that I tried to learn yesterday. Um, and there was no, I tried and little bits here and there and um, my excuse could be that I was really, really busy all day uh, recording some m music, I'm a musician, but I don't think that really that's the reason. Um, so uh, about five months ago, six months ago, I went as a musician on a long tour of uh, Europe for six weeks and Oh, it started in the United States. It was a f just a three or four days in the United States. One city was uh, Seattle. And for some reason that uh, day in Seattle, I got really um, inspired in a way that I have not always inspired to uh, try to do something for my body. Um, I act like someone that's always trying to do things for his body, but I don't really do that many things for my body. So when I was in Seattle in May, I decided I was going to get acupuncture on this day off. And um, for the first time, you would probably, if you had to guess, you'd probably think that I would have had uh, acupuncture done before, but I have not. And um, Adam would not have guessed that I would have before May. Uh, so in May, I, I decided to get acupuncture. And uh, I was looking in the phone book and or the internet, I guess, I was looking in on the internet for uh, Seattle acupuncturists. And um, I found kind of what I thought was like a serendipitous uh, acupuncturist. It was someone who was two blocks from my hotel and also someone whose name I had been hearing about for uh, years and years because they were like a um, fairly well-known improvising musician. Um, so being an improvising musician, I also knew of other improvising musicians. So uh, this is a woman who uh, I probably knew of her music from like the 80s in like the East Coast, but now somehow she lived in Seattle. I recognized her name, and I walked over in like seven minutes to her house, and I had really nice acupuncture. At the end, she, um, she asked me if I was a vegetarian, and I said no. She was really approving that I was not a vegetarian. She said, good, because you know, you're not, you should be eating a lot more protein, a lot more this and that. And she um, kind of convinced me to buy these pills um, called Catalan. And um, she kind of like advertised for this company that makes Catalan that they don't, um, you can't get everything that you need from meat just by eating meat. And this um, pill has all these things in it, like bird spleen and cow kidney and cow liver and all these exciting things. And uh, I started taking it, and then I went off to Europe for six weeks. And I didn't really notice I was feeling anything or I didn't really uh, have any like, wow, wow, this pill makes me feel great. But after about four weeks or five weeks, most of the way into my tour of like many different countries, some of which I'd never been, most cities I'd not been to, maybe like, you know, 
just a few that I've been to before, and uh, I didn't get sick at all. And most people who have been on any kind of musical tour know that being sick is like a big part of going on tour as a musician. Um, mo lots of five hour sleep nights, getting in a van, sitting in a closed van with other people who are also bodies are adapting to like strange cities and countries. And I didn't get sick for six weeks and I was really amazed. And I kind of attributed it to this pill that had all these animal products in it. And um, so that was kind of like the half of my testimony. The other half of my testimony was kind of that most of the research about hangover cures says that um, the best one is menudo that soup that you know Mexican places only cook and prepare like on Sunday because it has all it's very very hard to like find all the ingredients and it's very crazy to prepare and it's mostly made up of cow stomach and mo anyone if you research will say like oh menudo like knocks your hangover right out so I kind of put that together as the reason why I was not getting sick at all on this tour um, so yesterday I went to sort of uh, re-up my Catalan online and I searched Catalan, searching for places that had it kind of cheap, and uh, I found this really long article just kind of like derailing Catalan for being a multivitamin, why all these people are claiming to feel so great after Catalan. And I was like, fuck, what am I gonna do? I have this, like, all this like, evidence like why I should not take Catalan. And I just started skimming it, and it seemed most of it was like arguing a For addiction for dollars tonight, I apologize to uh, to uh, Naomi, uh, Andrea, and Louis. Who we had, you know, more people than we could uh, get on today. But please do come back. Um, uh, as everybody knows, uh, briefly, this is a free speech auditorium that's open six days a week. To uh, the only day it's closed is Mondays during the day, and so it's 12 to 5, and it can be used. Uh, by individuals or groups or student groups or activist groups or whatever. Um, uh, you can also, uh, if you have a group that would like to reserve the space, you can um, get one of these cards from me and there's an email and, we can, and you can reserve or you can just show up and try and use it. Um, please let your friends know about our upcoming events. Um, we've got uh, two more official events happening, one on Thursday the 29th, so the first Thursday after Thanksgiving. Um, will be the uh, Guided Meditation Marathon featuring a bunch of wonderful experimental writers. And then the week after that, December 6th, we'll have our closing reception and our TMFA award ceremony, which the TMFA is the Toastmasters of Fine Arts Award. And so everybody who participates in Diction for Dollars and other things will be able to uh, uh, graduate from our program here, the TMFA. So uh, plan to stay tuned for that stuff. Um, and uh, plan to grab a, some, some Besh Weeklies on your way out. Um, so thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Have a great night. <laughs>